It's another Tuesday evening, and we are live on Joy 99.7 FM. It's Git Quad with your girl, Adobia Pep Breachum. Welcome to another evening of us informing you when it comes to tech-related content. Last week, if you joined us, we did something a bit different from what we had done in the month of September. We looked at the new products from Apple, which was the iPhone 15, the Pro, the Pro Max. Now, in the weeks prior to that, we looked at how best we can secure our mobile money and also online shopping. Today, we are looking at how best we can manage banking fraud in digital payments. Yes, there is a need for us to see how best we can manage certain things that happen because most of us now, if not all, have banking apps that we use and there are times that issues come on that and we want to see how best we can manage some of the frauds concerning the use of these digital payment platforms my guests are ready and so am i will soon be getting into the conversation but before we do that we want you to interact with us and so when it's time just send us your message if you have any question to our whatsapp number 055 one 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 nine nine seven zero five five one 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 nine nine seven when it's time for the phone in session two you can reach us on our number we'll just be sharing that with you we are also live streaming on facebook and on youtube at joy nine nine seven you can just check us out that's if you're not driving anyway but if you are please just go ahead and be listening to us from joy 99.7 fm now before we get into our conversation today i'll go ahead and introduce my guests i have one returning guest i'm calling him a returning guest because he's not been on the show once this would be like his third time probably he is a cyber security professional in the person of gideon kofi amegavi gideon you're welcome thank you peps all right i have also another returning guest and he is the lead financial crimes and anti-money laundering at e-crime bureau he is in the person of eric kwekumensa eric you're welcome thank you very much Pedro. all right before we get into our conversation today talking about managing banking fraud in digital payments we want to know what is happening in the tech space so at this point i'm going to just invite Prince, just let us know what are we experiencing in the tech space. So, um, today in tech, Microsoft wants AI to help you do everything in its new Windows 11. So Microsoft has just unveiled the latest version of Windows 11 and it comes with AI and everything new in so many tools that they have. Um, AI is going to help you to write your word, read emails summarize your meetings and all of that the next in the news is that google map directed a man to drive off a bridge and the family of this man have sued google <laughs> so paxton family have sued google because um they claim that they are their family member used the map and it wrongly took him off uh, a broken bridge and they are wondering why Google didn't update their app. Okay, next in the tech news, leaked documents suggest that a new Xbox Series X model will be released next year. So game lovers expect that on the way. Now, the next Google Pixel 8 and Pixel Watch 2 will be announced on October 4th. So those who use um, iPhone, Samsung, I mean, there are people who also use Google Pixel. We have one listener who love Google Pixel. And so this for you, like, we wait for this on October 4th. Yes, so um, Perpetua, that's all in the news. Thank you so much, Prince, for that. As for the Google and Google Maps, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> it has done something to me before. <laughs> but I believe that is for another day. At least some, some over there, 
they doing this you win i'm sure something good will come out of it but if you're just joining us this is the geek squad where your girl adobe Pep Breachum. geek squad is brought to you by mtn mtn everywhere you go today we are looking at managing banking fraud in digital payments managing banking fraud in digital payments i i know that i mean for some time now and it's even one of the discussions we had the very first time when we spoke about securing mobile yeah. money we spoke about the fact that e-money e-cash has come to stay yeah but just let us look at ghana most countries now are doing a lot of electronic transactions but when it comes to ghana it's like we still like to use cash like why what why are we not even there yet like what exactly is the issue i can start with you eric okay thank you very much uh, perpetual in fact it's a gradual process mm. seriously speaking uh, ghana has come a very long way when you look at the internet penetration rates when you just opposed 2000 which we had less than one percent to just 2023 which is over 71 percent we've come a very long way but when it comes to you know using financial services products that are electronic based we are a bit lagging right and and one because of the digital infrastructure mm. right and also some of the challenges that come up when it comes to financial inclusion we also have some problems when it comes to verification of identities because all these are some of the bedrocks that you know uh, enhance digital payments right so let me just mention this uh, in 2021 world bank had a financial inclusion survey and it specifically looked at the percentage of a population of a country that is above 15 years that had or that were using debit cards mm -hmm. right ghana on that survey ranked 94th okay wow in fact you were you were just close to the uh, uh, because the countries there were about 121 countries that were on 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 uh, that were surveyed right okay. and we ranked 94th in fact the first top three are netherlands sweden and denmark right so so that is that is how the the whole thing is but of course there are some challenges that i know uh, we are putting in some measures. You, you hear about the cash light, the, the desire to, you know, have a cash light economy, the digital transformation agenda, and all that that is going on. All this are just to, you know, help us reach that level that other advanced countries are. Right. So, so basically, that is where we are. There's more room for improvement. Okay. So you mentioned that identification of people also makes it difficult for us to even go ahead and get to that stage where some of these countries yeah. are did you say anything you like to add to it why ghana is not there yet in the first place <laughs> well like eric said i think we've come far we've come far as a nation uh i believe it's a gradual process and uh with i think the main issue had to do with the infrastructure in terms of technology i think it took us very long to get the fundamentals right we are still struggling with the basis to some extent, but I think we are we are getting there. And the other part has to do with the the citizens' awareness level. You know, we were very used to the same old way of handling cash and all the butter tree system for years. <laughs> so it's, it's a gradual process. And now you can see most of the youth coming up are embracing this technology and with the with the with the, what do you call it, with the introduction of the various social media platforms and all these things are giving us, or is giving some enlightenment to this space. So you get there. It's just a gradual process. By all means, we'll yeah, get there. Sure. <laughs> so today we are zooming in on to mobile banking, as in the mobile apps for various banks and how best we can manage some of the frauds associated with them. I don't know, but for some specific banks, once you just log into your application, there's usually a message that comes. Don't share your OTP, which is your one-time password, yeah. with anyone when mm. they call you or anything. Why is that even people have even got to that place where they are using mobile apps, they're expecting that everything should work fine. And I'm sure somebody would even say, because of some of these first, they will not even download the app in the first place yeah. because <laughs> anything can even happen. Yeah. But we are at a place where we want to be doing cashless. Yeah. So, 
if we can just touch on it, what are some of the things that are even cases of fraud or why people may even be skeptical about using the apps in the first place? Eric. Okay, sure. So, you know, when it comes to technology, there's a lot of um, protocols that must be put in place. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a concept which is the technology, the processes, and the people. Now, when you roll out an app, there are some safeguards that you ought to ask an institution to put in place when it comes to the security of that application so that it is not easily hacked right then also some of the processes you realize that some mobile apps uh, once you sign in uh, to make a transaction you don't really really need to have an otp meanwhile that is a best practice mm -hmm. right so if an app is rolled out without such a best practice i tell you once there's money involved criminals yeah. will go yeah. and target it yeah. yeah right now another thing is the customer education okay. that is lagging now analysis from our end that's e-crime bureau reveals that customer education is actually really down yeah. because oftentimes m m bulk of the budget of the institutions go into you know advertising the app and all that but as to teaching their customers yeah. how to protect themselves on the app is lacking so it's very important for institutions to also invest in that customer education so that their customers will know some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to using their apps for the financial transactions it's really important yeah. So right from the start, there must be a need for the people who use the apps to be well informed yeah. how to use the apps yeah. and to even alert them of some of these issues that may come up yes. with and, that. And Professor, let me add this to what Eric said. You know, uh, we have an old mentality where people are used to cash, like I said, and people always want to fill the cash. I recall a scenario and a, a, a case where someone won a lottery. Mm -hmm. and the amount was deposited into his bank account he still argued that he has not received the amount so he <laughs> wants to fill the, the money so he went straight into the banking hall cashed out the the entire amount counted them like counted the, the amount then deposited it back just to be sure just, just to be sure the, the money has been deposited into his account <laughs> so you see people are so used to these ways of transacting using a physical cash and frankly speaking this is costing the nation a lot because it takes us a lot of money to go for this uh, hard currencies, this fiat currencies. And at the end of the day, look at how we handle them, the paper notes. For the coins, they are able to even survive our, our, our economic hardship to some extent. <laughs> but the, the paper notes or the fiat currencies, you know, these ones struggle. Within a few days or a few weeks, they, they just go bad. So it's an area which I think is not just the banks, but the government and every other stakeholder needs to take it serious because i believe if we are able to do more of e-cash it's going to help us reduce even the cost in printing this money yeah so from the discussion so far we see that there are so many advantages of we using the e-cash because when it comes to printing of money and all we will take money to even print yeah. but where we are able to just transact electronically at least we are keeping all that cost of printing in the first place so with this said we just have to look at how best we can manage the fraud associated with it because we have seen that the advantages are there however there are disadvantages yeah, yes. and now let me recount why at a point in time some banks started giving that message of don't share your otp with anyone mm -hmm. there could be a very good case study it is not to show people how to do the mm, bad thing yeah. anyway but it's just to draw our attention to some of the ways they do this yeah. and how best we can prevent yeah. it from happening to us now with this case study what happens is that if you are saving with a particular bank mm -hmm. sometimes they do you they do the whole downloading the app and accessing your account so seamless that it's not something that would deter you from doing it yeah. and with this seamless way which is an advantage the disadvantage is that some people can just pick your phone number for instance go ahead download that bank app and then enter it in there with some few details that they have of you mm then they receive the OTP. They don't even receive the OTP. They are using your number. 
So that's when they will call you and say, yeah. oh, you are in a yeah. group, this, 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 give us the number that you have just received. Yeah. And then somebody goes ahead to and give them the number. Yeah. Then the account is literally on someone else's phone. They are transacting on there. So when it comes to this, and given this case study, how best do we, I know we have mentioned we educating mm -hmm. the people, but what are some of the ways, like technically, where people can be aware of what to do so that when situations like that come up, they don't find themselves wanting? Okay. So uh, I think before we even go to that level, yeah. talk about the education, there was this report uh, done by the regulator of the banks, that's Bank of uh, okay. Ghana, and uh, that was for last year. And basically, they were looking at suspected or attempted fraud cases and successful uh, fraud cases uh, within the banking sector, the, what do you call it, the specialized deposit-taking institutions, institutions and the, and the payment, payment savings, savings providers. Uh, you know, providers. So, and it's, it's shocking to read this. this. This report is made publicly available for everybody who wants to uh, read that. And there are some key areas in there that are, that are very shocking. But even gave me some some awakening because i realized that there are some type of fraud within the space we're not even taking uh, we, we don't even know of or mm -hmm. we're not even taking into consideration so in the report they did mention of certain type of fraud like okay. the forgery uh, forgery and manipulation of documents this it seems to be a common thing but we don't even know that is is a serious fraud area people are leveraging on mm -hmm. the fake bank statements uh, those, uh, you know, when people want to travel, some of them will connect with some bankers and some people and then they get this. These are all part of the fraudulent activities within the banking mm -hmm. space. There's also the mention of the fraudulent withdrawers. People making withdrawers that are not legit. Mm -hmm. the, we have also the check fraud, which we know has been the old game, yeah. you know, has been there since yeah. Adams. But then we also have the cyber and the email fraud, which are kind of the new trend coming in and i think there's also there's also the cash uh, suppression yeah. or the, the cash theft yeah. also where uh for the sake of time i cannot go into details of this but that is also where uh people instead of crediting your account you 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 they, they don't and people even use people's money mm -hmm. to uh, uh, transact in other businesses overnight overnight yes <laughs> overnight <business. laughs> and, and uh, you know, so there are a lot of fraudulent activities within this space. And if you check the, the statistics, it's really alarming. And I think I will entreat everybody who is interested in this very topic to just Google online and get this document to read. Yes. So now maybe Eric will touch on that yeah. before we go into the how people can uh, uh, be cautious of their online activities. Thank you very much, Gideon. So uh, just to add two of the schemes uh, for our viewers and, and listeners. So one is a card not present fraud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So card not present fraud is a fraud scheme that targets those who use, in Ghana here we will call it a debit card, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In other jurisdictions is their credit card and then uh, their prepaid cards. Yeah. So card not present is, for your card, when you check your card, there are some numbers. Yeah. That is the PAN primary account number yeah. there is a parry date and then there's also the cvv, CVV at, the back. at the back now that those are the primary information that you need to make an online purchase so typically what a criminal does is that they steal this information via phishing attacks mm -hmm. right they set up a portal for you to you know make some purchase so as soon as you input your PAN, expiry date, and CVV, they capture this information and they can use it to make purchases in on any e-commerce portal. So those listening now, those watching now, you have to keep your cards. I mean your debit cards. Yes. Sometimes even physically. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you go to four stations, we so gave an yes. example so like easy. that. Yeah. So you have to protect it as though it is it yeah, were cash. money. Yes. Cash for you. And the other one I want to also add is the account takeovers yeah we have seen a lot <laughs> of account takeovers the other time i was talking about whatsapp account takeover there is also the account takeover of online banking uh, accounts so here your username and your password that you use to access your online banking mm -hmm. platform the criminal is able to use social engineering schemes to get this information then they use it to you know wipe your account clean so Please protect yourself. Yeah. Please protect yourself. Do not input your, you know, username and passwords anywhere, particularly when they share it via, you know, WhatsApp or all the other links. No, 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 no. 
go to your bank's official site yeah. and then you assess the online banking from that angle yeah. There is a need for us to protect ourselves. We are looking at managing banking fraud when it comes to digital payments. The focus here is on digital payments. Yeah. And I like what Eric just mentioned, talking about the use of our cards. So these cards, mm -hmm. the debit cards, I mean, for someone who is just wondering, ATM it's card. ATM card. <laughs> please, ATM card. <laughs> just your ATM card. <laughs> that very card that you use, like you mentioned, there's usually the main number that is yeah. there. If it's a Visa, visa it's, card, for yeah. instance, you see that number, yeah. the expiry date. When you turn it, you see the CVV number. Mm, yeah. Once someone gets hold of your CVV, they yeah. can literally do any online transaction yeah. for you yeah. they will not need any pin or code or anything yeah. to do that yeah. so, so that is where we have to be careful with yeah here, I, I just want to touch on this uh in fact before uh you can use a card to do this online transaction there are basically some few information they require so they require the card number yeah. they require the the card holder's name, the name. Yeah. then the expiring date we have the the the, the CVV, yeah. Yeah. which is the the, the uh, I think the card uh, verification, verification value. value. Yes, yeah. and then your billing address. Yeah. Good. So these are the details they need. But the funny thing is, once you get just the card number mm, and the CVV, you are good to transact, which is the number in front of the card and the one at the back. So I think for the sake of yeah. the, the education, we won't go we won't go into detail. So people <laughs> will, will know how to go about this. But basically, that is it. So if Eric says you should value your card like cash, it means that the cash you have is your card. Yeah. And you ask the question: Why are people not too okay to transact online? Yes. The question is: If you have about hundred thousand Ghana cedis, just a, a, a figure, attached to your ATM card. Would you want to just use it anywhere, anyhow? <laughs> I like what so you're going there. <laughs> you, there. You, you get it. Some friends of mine, we went to eat together, Winnie mm -hmm. and Ruby, and I think Sarah. We were all seated. We finished everything. It was time to make payments. She, she decided to use the card. And then the message we got was it has been bounced, as in mm -hmm. yeah. we couldn't do the yeah. payment. And we were wondering what exactly happened. And guess what? A mistake of the person entering the details uh -huh. on the POS. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of about a thousand CDs worth of the uh -huh. transaction that we had done, uh -huh. the person entered 110,000 CDs. Wow. So just imagine Zero if my friend difference. exactly <laughs> if my friend had in fact what my friend said was even if it was ten thousand, yeah. I wouldn't have realized because yeah. it would have gone through. Yes. And yeah. just imagine I mean, we were all at a point like, ah, what just happened? Mm -hmm. Hundred and something mm -hmm. thousand for just dinner. <laughs> yeah. Like, and yeah. if the money was there, yes. she had yeah, just I got a car. So mm -hmm. she said, if it was like a week ago, I'm sure this money would have just Away. gone and, out. And the sad story is, they will tell you to take two weeks to Before get your you money get back. Your money. Exactly, when some of these things happen. It's very happen, frustrating. Yeah. When yes. some of these things happen. Good. So what? these are some of the things that deter people from using it. Because if I give you cash and there's an issue, I can just take my cash back. But if I use card to do transaction, and I'm saying this on record, yeah. it, it, ha it has happened to me before. Yeah. Now you use your card to buy fuel at the fuel, uh, the fuel station, and there's an issue. They will tell you, go and come back. We are now going to... You know, I understand the processes involved and all that. But if we really want to get there, our banking sector, our PSPs and these uh, DSIs and all the other guys should improve upon the processes exactly. so that it will be a little bit easy for the consumers to patronize the service. Exactly. Exactly. So for us and with what happened, one of the things that I believe we can all look at doing is when it comes to POS payments, we should at least check the value to see yeah. if it is what we know due we diligence. are paying yeah, for. Yeah, due diligence. Yeah. It comes yeah. back again. The yeah. due diligence is something that we kept mentioning the last time and it's very important, especially when it comes to online transactions. Yeah. Now, the mobile apps for the different banks, mm. even with that, you mentioned something where they do account takeover. And yeah. I think the case study I was given is a similar thing. Mm -hmm. Because the person only needs your phone number. They <laughs> create the account in terms of downloading the app. The, now it belongs to them. It. And now then even the same swap. We talked about it, I think, yes, when during the yeah. mobile money. Yeah. With that in place, if you're not careful, even OTP doesn't even OTP work again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which we also come to that when you come to the... the 
Have some to, of the yeah, ways we can prevent some of the area. things from yeah. happening if you are just joining us this is the gig squad with adobia pep Bridgeum. today we are looking at managing banking fraud when it comes to digital payments i know that gig squad we are getting a lot of listening coverage i know sandra you are listening to me from takrade with the girls and also mama dots and mama joyce from kumasi thank you so much for making time to listen we are looking at how best we can secure when it comes to the banking fraud and how we can reduce some of the issues with this. Please let's get interactive. Send me a message on WhatsApp 055 1111 We'll also be opening the phone for you to also call us. You can reach us on 0302 216541. We want to get into more details when it comes to we securing ourselves when we are using these digital platforms, especially concerning our banking systems. Now, with that said, we want to see how best some of these things can yeah. be prevented. Yeah. So we're going into more details. I know we have mm. touched yeah. on some of them from the conversations we yeah. have had so far. But if we can go into some more details where people can prevent some of these things happening to them. Mm. Eric. Okay. okay, so let me just uh, begin then. Uh, mm. My brother mm. Gideon mm. will <laughs> continue. <laughs> so, first off, since it's online, you are going to assess a URL, right? So the URL is the the string of uh, numbers or characters that yeah. is in the web browser. The web browser right. exactly. So you have to make sure that it is secured. And okay. what do we mean by having it being secured? You know, when you go to your web browser, you realize that there's something the HTTPS. So the S means the website is secure. So anytime you are inputting information, be it your personal information or you know your your bank details you have to make sure that that https is over there mm. right and yeah, like i mentioned bundle. earlier on don't just follow links to access your online banking portal or even make any purchase online go to the institution that you want to purchase from or you want to transact the business with right to do it now also because we are talking about digital payments and fraud ensure that the merchants you buy from right um i don't want to mention any brand yeah. so yeah. yes but the merchants you you yeah. buy from are trusted merchants yeah. don't just follow anybody and say hey this this site they are very good yeah. their products are very cheap when you go there you, you don't have a guarantee I that uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, your, your card information will be saved uh, uh, will, will, will be safe so it's very important that you do now you also have to set a two-factor authentication sometimes we call it multi-factor authentication on your mobile banking uh, 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 app right so that when you input your username and password you get an otp sometimes it's you use an app to authenticate it depending on what your financial institution has mm. provided mm always ensure so if you are listening now or you are watching now ensure you set up your multi-factor authentication on any portal that you have registered with in terms of either financial related portal or even you know some of your accounts that you use to purchase stuff online set it up it is extremely important now i will end here for the customers right now uh generally let me just uh, uh before gidon comes yeah, in pardon me the regulatory angle is also extremely important yeah. mm -hmm. right so that there is someone in charge watching over what the financial institutions are doing yeah so that when they put a product out that is not fit for purpose mm -hmm. they are called and they are made to what make it fit for purpose yeah, yeah. it is extremely important yeah. regulatory compa compliance yeah. Yeah. now also the element of you know the law enforcement and the financial intelligence units is also extremely important so that when there is a fraud case they come in swiftly to come and investigate and apprehend the perpetrators of this yeah. you know a, a, a fraudulent schemes let me add the last bit before mm -hmm. uh, uh, gidon comes in yeah. even the private sector mm -hmm. has a role to play yeah the program you're having now is educating 
ed 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 educating. So you do that to educate people. Even we at E Crime Bureau, in October, which is going to be the National Cyber Security Awareness Month, mm -hmm. we are actually rolling out a program yeah. online on our e -po uh, learning portal, a cyber security awareness uh, uh, program where we anticipate, you know, uh, um, onboarding over hundred thousand Ghanaian citizens. So that they can get the skill to be able to protect some of this digital related fraud schemes that we are we are we are discussing here. So it's extremely important we all have roles to play in order to safeguard the uh, financial ecosystem. Everyone has a role to play, and sometimes we have to do the due diligence. Mm. One of the things we have to put in place is to have the multi-factor authentication. So there are different applications that can even be used for this we have the google authenticator yeah, for instance microsoft, yeah. microsoft authenticator is there so the application that you are using all you have to do is to set this up so that there will be a second form of verification if someone is to get hold of your account and it's one of the things that i even say with whatsapp account mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you have that set up all the social media there is no accounts. way someone will just yeah. be able to access your account even if they get hold of your password they will yeah. need to cross that step which yeah. you are the only one who would have access to in order to do it another thing you also mentioned was we check in the browser so yeah. to know that it's secure the https when you have s at the end you know that it's secure sometimes you can even check with just the padlock sign yeah. in the browser yeah. for mm. you to know yeah. that this particular site you are accessing is secure or not when you are entering information you are able to do that Gideon, yes, okay what would you like to okay so that? i'll take it from the customer point of view okay. and these are basic uh, house cleaning exercise everybody can do yeah. so i would like my listeners to take note of this and they can do it from tomorrow it's already <laughs> late there are some of them you need to contact your banks to do that so first and foremost i always advise people to opt for debit card or credit cards that are not directly linked to their main bank account Great. that is very important if you are the online type and you want to be shopping online the atm card that you are normally being given by your bank we know by default is linked to your bank account which is risky to some extent because if you use this atm card to transact online and it's been compromised, you, you, you know the consequences. Exactly. So opt for options. So I know some of the banks do have that. They can give you some cards that are and not directly like your prepaid cards or yeah. good. And the second option is to go for virtual cards where possible. So if your bank support virtual card system, go for that. So with a virtual card, how it works is it's the same, it has the same functionality just like the physical card. You only create it for a duration, for either six months, for a year, depending on your bank. Mm -hmm. Then you transfer the funds onto it. You transact with it. So anytime you want to transact, you just transfer. So you transfer only a portion or the amount you want on it. So if you have been compromised at a point in time, it's only the amount you have there that, you, that have will, you, will, there. you will lose. Okay, just okay. before you okay. continue with that, I just have a message that I would like to just read out from Mr. Inkum Kovina. He's saying, good evening to you all. In fact, I've been educated <laughs> about this fraudulent purchasing site. I nearly fell for such, as been explained by your guests. So like you're yeah. saying, there's a need for yeah. us to check because that tendency is there for someone to also mm. fall for it. The phone lines are open just in case you like to call we would like to hear from you if you've ever fallen for any of these or you have any question feel free to reach us on the number zero three zero two two zero three zero two 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 zero three zero two two one six five four one you can reach us on that number or okay. you can also send us a WhatsApp message on zero five five one 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 nine nine seven. Okay, so to continue from where I left off, also uh, in the situation where your bank doesn't offer these virtual cards, what I would advise you do, if you still want to use this ATM cards or your 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 debit card, then limit your transaction per day or per month. That is also a good practice. Yeah. So even if the bank is not willing to limit it for you, you limit it to a reasonable amount. A reasonable depends on your expenditure. Mm -hmm. So you put it in a reasonable limit so that in case you are being compromised, you don't lose much. Mm -hmm. Also, sign up for SMS and emails. Please, it doesn't cost a lot. You need to monitor or have real-time alerts on your account. Anytime there's a transaction, 
debit or credit alert, you need to know it. So when somebody transacts on your behalf that you are not aware of, you should know. It surprises exactly. me to know when you, 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 you transfer money to people and they'll still call you to ask you, have you deposited the money? Meanwhile, it means that they've not subscribed to this SMS. I think no bank charges more than 30 CDs for the whole for year. SMS, for, exactly. for SMS and this. And uh, to the banks too, I think this can be value added services. You can make some of this thing free of charge for to make the services easy and uh, you know more convenient for the customers. So that is another thing we need to watch out for. Always make sure that you have these transactions, uh, this alert activated on all your accounts. I also advise people to use trusted Wi-Fi or internet services. So I'll use a Wi-Fi. So what do, what do we mean by untrusted service? So for instance, the public Wi-Fi we have, you go to the airport, you go to the cafeteria, you go to the restaurant, you 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 find yourself at a, a you know at a public area and there's a free Wi-Fi being given. My advice is that whenever you are using this public Wi-Fi, do not use your mobile apps, your banking apps, and don't do online banking through this untrusted public Wi-Fi, because there is an attack system called the man in the middle attack, yeah. where somebody can intercept your transaction and then you know do the bad thing from there so these are basic things that anybody with the skills on the network can perform that so imagine somebody who has been trained or who has dedicated his time to uh, uh, to hack you or to attack you it will just take minutes for the person to do that so always make sure that when you're using this public wi-fi i can't say don't use them maybe you may want to send whatsapp message and all that or make some calls via whatsapp so at least if you're using them make sure you don't transact or don't use your bank banking apps over there all right it seems we have a phone caller so we'll go ahead and pick that our hassan hello good evening yes, yes. good evening lady hi for your, uh, okay you. why are you Thanks calling from program. please yeah i'm calling from tema okay yeah please i just want your your explanation on this scenario uh i'm a card holder I barely do online transactions. I don't travel much to use it elsewhere or even internationally. And yet, someone is able to use my card from a far off jurisdiction to make online purchases. I report to my bankers. They do investigations upon investigations. Eventually, they are able to return my money. How does this happen? Was it, because all the risk factors, I was not exposed to them. Will it be an internal collaboration within the bank? Or how come these comments are able to penetrate and be able to get my access to my data? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Al Hassan. <laughs> Seems okay. both of you are ready to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Eric said I should take it first. <laughs> all right, Al Hassan. Okay, so sorry for the inconvenience caused. As always, that's what I, I think when you call your, your bank, they will tell you. And then they will find the money to you. But I will take it from two different angles. This could be a close ally. Somebody closer to you who got this information and sold it or transacted online. And you see, as humans as we are, we may forget that maybe some time back, then you didn't have anything in this account. So you didn't really value the, the ATM card. It was lying anywhere, anyhow. And somebody chanced on this and then transacted somewhere on safe. And then these details were picked by the bad, the bad actors. And thereafter, they, they, they sold it to people. All right. Yeah. We'll continue with our right. Hassan's question. We have another caller on the line. Kaka, hello. Good evening. Good evening, madam. Thank you very much for this educative piece. Yes, please. Why are you uh, calling from? I'm calling from Legon. Okay, Kakra. Kindly go ahead with you. Yes, I, I, I begin to pick it from what I'll have and the, the first call I just shared. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be thank you for your, your, your education and everything you do. I don't know about the banks. You see, um, sometimes people talk about hack, 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 hack. The lesson I know about is most often there are certain remnants the internal people give out. Okay? Let us not lose focus of it, mm. irrespective of the education you give out most often about 90 percent of these guys are negligent of internal banking staff the staff in the in, 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 at the banks look at the first guy who called 
have not transacted anyway. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe he might have left some remnants of a transaction some, some way. The ATM card, if you want to go and use the ATM card and you drop your receipt down, it is the part of information that somebody would have used to at least lead to a little something that he wouldn't have had if you had not left it there. But what I'm, what I'm, uh, I'm put across is, I believe the e-crime guy would uh, yes. uh, understand with me that yeah. the internal banking staff, yeah. they are the threat, they are the biggest, the people we deal with. <laughs> and I believe he, 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 he would understand what, what I mean. Yeah, mm. thank you so much. They will come much. and blow their mind, they will have pack, have pack, have pack. No, no, really. the small social intelligence, something they did, somebody did on, on, yeah. on, 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 on the banking staff, a national service person who is working at the bank, mm. an intern. So I, I, I believe that one of the greatest things that he is doing, that he should, he should let the bank start doing, is, is the training yeah. that we give to interns. You know, the interns come, we don't give them any training. The attachment guys come, the NSF people come from the university. They don't have anything. All they know, all they know is TikTok and WhatsApp. Yeah, thank so you so much, Kakra. I think we'll great. touch on more details on that too. Thank you so much. There's another caller we'll have to pick. Kweku, hello, good evening. Hi, Hi good evening. Hi, Kweku. Where are you calling yes, from, uh, please? I'm calling from Accra. Okay. Yeah, so first of all, I want to say much uh, big ups to Eric. Uh, I think we have encountered him a couple of times before, but uh, so he can be had a program at GZ a couple of months ago, and uh, I was to be a member of that uh, section, and it was quite educative on the uh, mobile money fraud and then the uh, cyber security issue. So, I just want to ask a question. Um, my question is concerning the banking app. Um, how secure are they? Because mostly this banking app requires you to do a lot of updates. And I know when these updates are not done consistently, you are susceptible to uh, attack. So I want, us, I want him to educate us a little bit more on the banking app. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. We would answer Hello. that. Hello. Good evening, Bashir. Uh, Why are you calling evening. from? Yeah, good evening, madam. Hi, good evening. Why are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Medina. All right. Hello. Please. Kindly go yes. ahead. Uh, in fact, this evening, I'm highly, highly educated. Currently, I'm having a particular issue that I have with my bank. One day, I guess, like three weeks ago, I wake up in the morning just to see some deduction from my accounts. The kind of deduction they did, the money in my account, they just took everything. And I, so I went to the bank, I called my bank and told them. So when I went, they said, oh, I transferred money from my mobile app, uh, the app to somebody. And I said, no, I have never used the app. There's no day I have used the app before. It was even the day I came to the bank to open a savings account. That was the day I opened, uh, I, I activated uh, the app. Since then, I have never used the app. And when I opened the app, uh, when I just opened it, and the people are telling me I have used the app to transfer money. And I said, no, I have never used the app to transfer money. You see, so they are telling me I transferred the money to one person and it's an internal thing. I was expecting them to tell me, oh, let's meet this person. Is this person that you transferred the money to? They all can do their own things. I'm there, they retrieve the money into my account. When we were I was talking to them that, oh, I'm, uh, this money has entered my account. The money actually was 7000 Before I realized, they sent me uh, 6000 after some days. So when I called the manager to tell her that, oh, they sent me some 6000 Is he? Okay. They, they, uh, this is. Then he sent out, they are retrieving the money. So that's the amount they have retrieved, but okay. they are still on it. Okay. Okay, but at least yeah, it's, that's being addressed. Thank you so much for that input. We'd like to address the questions that have come through from mm. our callers. All right. Okay, so let me just uh, talk about the insider threat uh, yeah. comment. Yes. Yes, of course, insider threat is everywhere, yeah. right? So uh, one thing we have seen uh, per 
our analysis of the trends over the past years is that insider threats, when they mention insider threats, oftentimes we think that it's just a malicious insider. Mm. That means that the bad uh, guy in there. But there are three levels. There is a malicious insider, there is a non-compliant and negligent insider, yeah. which we often forget about, and they form a majority of the insider threats vulnerabilities. Right, then we have the exploited insider. So I think this being said, it's very important that f financial institutions train their staff. He mentioned national service personnel, those doing attachment and internship. It's important that they are trained on at least basic cyber security and data protection. Okay. Right. So uh, I think you touched that up, or let me just uh, touch on it briefly. How okay, secured are the banking yeah. apps? That yeah. was my yeah. question. So, so, so basically, right now, I can sit here and say every bank's app is not secured or not uh, or secured. Yeah. Right. But there are key things to be done. There must be vulnerability assessment and penetration testing on all apps before they are, you know, rolled out there. We don't just come into haste and then get a developer, develop a very nice interface and you throw out there. You need to do assessment on the app and regularly update the apps because yeah. applications get up outdated over time. Yeah. So do update them. Let me just leave it for Gideon to also complete. Okay. So, so it the last person, mm -hmm. at least I just want us to address the yeah. I think for Bashiru, right? Yes, Okweku. Bashiru. I think, yeah, he's fortunate that uh, his case has been taken on, and uh, he didn't yeah. have a bank app at all. Y yes, so that's like those the ATM <laughs> card issue. Yeah, so you see, I think when you did the mobile money education, we, we touched on that. That sometimes the people in your household are your main threat. You get it because, for instance, people use their date of birth or year of birth as their pin 19. 42 1952 <laughs> the four digits they use it as your apm the atm pin yeah. so the moment you do this and uh, a stubborn kid in the house sees this he will definitely exploit on that so i mean those are some of the i'm not saying that's what bashiru Okweku did but at least these are some of the common mistakes we do yeah from the way this conversation is going i think i'll just have a quick chat with my producer probably we'll have we to do part a part two, two of it because <laughs> we need to have more education on this there are so many questions yeah and we won't be able to solve them yeah. all but before we get to the end of everything we will want to give you some things about quick tech fixes but before that we'll take a quick break when we are back we'll give you some tips on that this is the geek squad with your girl adobe ape breachum today we have had a very interesting conversation unfortunately some of the questions we couldn't answer and so we are going to have a part two of this managing the banking fraud especially when it comes to digital payments we saw a question from swadika about contactless card please just stay tuned next week. Our guests are returning next week. Thank you so much for making time to join thank me, you, Eric you, and Gideon. Thank and thank you for listening to me. I know, sister, you are listening, Some, most of you. And thank you very much once again to my producer, Prince, Adam, and Abeku. God willing, next week we'll be meeting same time, 7 p.m. on the Geek Squad Show. Thank you once again.